a mysterious stranger named John arrived in a small town in North Carolina. No one knew who he was, but it didn't take long for the locals to love him, especially a woman named Lee. As a single mother, Lee grew closer to John, but she couldn't ignore the feeling that he was hiding something. Little did she know, the subject of Lee's infatuation was a convicted felon, living secretly in a Toys R Us for the past few months, and finally planning his next hit. November 2004, the small church community in North Carolina was a quiet, peaceful place, but there was something ominous about their new addition, John. He was perfect, with his saint-like demeanor and quiet humility. With a prince-like charm out of a storybook, he always seemed ready to give gifts to children in need. A local woman, Lee Wainscott, quickly fell for his charms, and things were getting serious. John had just spent another weekend with her and her two boys, even helping the family to put up their Christmas tree. But she couldn't shake the feeling there was something John wasn't telling her. He seemed to have a life beyond them, one that he kept hidden. Separating his personal and professional life, he refused to disclose what his occupation was exactly. All they knew was that John worked a top secret government job, a job that allowed him to spoil his girlfriend rotten. Yet, Lee still felt she didn't know him completely. John's home, which he never brought any guests to, could only be described as a children's wonderland. The walls were freshly painted and adorned with movie posters and mini basketball hoops. And his entertainment center was complete with a full DVD library, his favorite being Spider-Man. Not luxurious by any means, but it was home. At night, before he tucked himself into his Spider-Man bedsheets, John sleepily gazed around his apartment lovingly observing the elaborate collection of action figures he'd collected over the past months since he moved in, and his dreams took over. The tiny 4x10 feet apartment was set up under a staircase. John had routed some pipes to the adjacent building for running water, and had an endless supply of baby food for when he got hungry. Peering through a baby monitor, he could watch people going about their day in the neighboring building, privy to when they arrived early in the morning for work up until when they left for the day. His silent days of observing their every move and planning were over. He would make his move on December 26th, right after Christmas, on Boxing Day. Years of scheming had led up to this moment. Three years ago, in 1997, it was a simpler time when kids were living the dream, getting their fix of Happy Meals and ice cream cones in McDonald's during the weekends, under the golden arches in sunny California. Unbeknownst to the patrons and employees, trouble was hanging just above. A masked figure was perched on the roof, patiently waiting for closing time, as the hot sun was setting and the last customers were trickling away. He was better known to police as the Roof Man, and had been wreaking havoc on fast food restaurants coast to coast for months. Once the final customer left the establishment, the masked man got to work, drilling holes into the roof, boring all the way through the ceiling. Once he had a good opening, the roof man quickly descended, dropping right into the middle of staff working to finish off their shift, alarming them. The roof man was confident. It wasn't his first rodeo. He firmly ordered the cashier to hand over the daily receipts to ensure he got all the daily earnings. When the employee didn't comply right away, he popped a few warning shots into the air. The roof man never intended to injure anyone, but a little motivation couldn't hurt. With shaking hands, the cashier handed over the receipts. Mumbling a thanks, the invader couldn't help but to feel bad, inspecting his potential earnings. The underpaid teenagers working at the McDonald's were easy targets and were just doing their jobs. He decided to crack a joke to break the tension. Well, look at it this way. At least you'll get the rest of the day off. But the roof man wasn't done yet. He was nice enough to let the employees grab their jackets before gesturing them to step into the walk-in freezer. With one final sweep of the premises and a bag full of cash, he reassured them he'd call the police on the way out before closing the door. The roof man's MO went on for a few years, until one night in 2000, he made one crucial mistake that would take his whole operation down. After closing a freezer door on some scared employees, he lingered too long outside the restaurant. 
The police noticed a suspicious man and made an arrest on the spot before he could get to his car. Seeing no way out, the roof man surrendered and was cordial during his questioning. The police had finally caught the rooftop bandit after years of chasing, but had no idea what was up his sleeve. Armed with months of quiet contemplation, no bars would be able to break his ambition. Jeffrey Manchester had been serving time at the Brown Creek Correctional Institution for four years. He managed to snag a job at the prison's metal shop for good behavior, and his natural charm gained the trust of other inmates. He had gotten some information about the surrounding area from paying off his new friends with cigarettes. Using the metal shop to his advantage, he was able to work on personal projects. Over the last few months, he had shaped an escape plan. Jeffrey crafted a plywood plank into a useful tool to camouflage himself, and also sewed together old prison jumpsuits, meticulously designing civilian clothes from them. And now, all he needed was the perfect timing. Tonight was the night. The pouring rain would make it harder for the guard dogs to track his scent. When the sun went down, under the cover of darkness, the roof man snuck out careful to avoid the mud that splashed around with the rain. Finding a delivery truck that was making the supply rounds, he climbed into the undercarriage, using the plywood plank he made as a platform to lie down upon, which also shielded him from the mud as well as prying eyes. Once a safe distance from the facility, he planned to hitchhike his way into the city, using the information he had obtained from his inmate friends. Where the felon ended up surprised everyone, including himself. Reaching a small town in Mecklenburg County, the escaped convict rushed to find somewhere he could hide. Wearing the civilian clothing he had tailored, he was confident that as long as nobody recognized his face, nothing could possibly go wrong. Climbing out of a car he had hitchhiked in for the last stretch of the road, that's when the convict saw it. Toys are us. Entering the large toy store, he decided to wander around until the store closed, leaving him the only person in there after hours, unnoticed by the staff. Once the doors were locked behind him, he snuck into the manager's office, grabbing a camera system's manual and memorizing until he had a better understanding of the security system than the employees. Then, searching for a foolproof hiding spot all over the store, covered by the blind spots of the cameras, he discovered a small space behind the bicycle display. Over the next weeks, Jeffrey made the Toys R Us his home, hiding in his little cubby hole, tucked away inside the store. At night, he cycled on the bicycles on display around the store and raced remote control cars on the roof if he needed air. Life was looking up for the roof man as he got to work, moving around the employee's schedules to suit his own needs. But alas, he couldn't keep his rent-free idyllic life forever. Christmas music pervaded through the store as shoppers piled up to buy the perfect gifts for their young ones. Children ran around, filled with cheer, pointing out everything on their wish lists. But holiday hours meant the customers stayed longer. It became exceedingly more difficult to hide in the store, waiting for everyone to leave. So the roof man needed to find a new place, and fast. That's when he noticed a small hole underneath a stairwell in the basement. Digging inside, he found that the basement was connected to another building adjacent to Toys R Us, an abandoned electronics store called Circuit City. From his new hideout, he observed the toy store from a baby monitor and waited for the perfect time to strike. His plan seemed easy enough. Find a weapon and hold up the store. Get as much cash as possible. If the police were alerted, fleeing to his cubbyhole was easy enough. There was no way anyone would find him. As it turns out, the sweet little hiding spot couldn't stay hidden forever. On December 26th, one of the biggest retail days in the US, the roof man made his move. The plan was going smoothly, almost too good to be true. He had the store held up with a gun he had lifted from another shop. But things didn't go according to plan. Suddenly, two of the employees ran to the back of the store to alert authorities. Cursing under his breath, the roof man took off with his riches toward his hiding spot. He needed to get rid of as much evidence as possible, fast. When the police arrived, he was already long gone. Combing through every inch of the store to find any trace of evidence, they came across a small cubby hole in the basement that led to the adjacent store. The walls were covered in posters and filled with childlike luxuries. 
They found his stash of baby food, explaining how he was able to sustain himself while in hiding. The only fingerprint they were able to uncover was, ironically, a DVD copy of Catch Me If You Can. Matching the print to the escaped felon, police put out flyers searching for the missing perpetrator, Jeffrey Manchester. After asking several locals in the area if they had recognized the man, it was two members of the Presbyterian Church that recognized him as John, the quiet newcomer who had generously given his time to their small community. John's secret was finally revealed, but it wasn't over yet. Police tracked down girlfriend Lee Wainscott, who was shaken when she learned that it was all a deception. The man she fell in love with, the person decorating the glimmering Christmas tree back home with the kids, had betrayed her. All this time, she was unknowingly dancing with a criminal in disguise. The toys he lovingly gave to the kids in church turned out to be stolen from the Toys R Us he was living in. Lee couldn't decide if she wanted to hug him or yell at him. Where did those expensive earrings really come from? What else was John hiding? Knowing it was the right thing to do, Lee helped police come up with a plan to capture the roof man once and for all. The couple had plans to meet on the evening of January 5th to go out for Lee's birthday dinner. After that, John mentioned that he planned on going on a secret assignment for work and would be out of town for a while. That night, as he arrived to pick Lee up at her home, he was met by police who immediately apprehended him. Jeffrey, ever the gentleman, went down without a fight. Now, locked away, the roof man is left to work off the rest of his 45-year sentence. The question remains, will he ever find a way to shingle-handedly rob more fast food chains?